Hello, this is Joe Lorano, and once again, welcome to my YouTube channel, Sketchologic. Sketchologic is my uh, video blog dedicated solely for sketching, be it architectural sketching, traditional sketching, or the now popular urban sketching. Today, you'll be learning, and I will be showing you how to draw line drawing and then uh, using only pen and ink. And then later on, I will demonstrate to you how to use transparent watercolor for coloring this sketch exercise. But before that, I would like every one of you, especially those who have visited this site for the first time, to please subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, click like or uh, share. So without any further ado, let's get started. Started. Our sketch reference uh, model is the SS Master. In this sketch exercise, uh, we'll be using a 0.3 mm micron pen, regular uh, pencil uh, app type. Here, I'll be showing you how I use the pencil in marking up those light lines in order for me to get the exact or the approximate uh, location or span of the size of the model in relation to the watercolor uh, paper. So here I'm just uh, setting up those uh, light lines. And if I were done with those, uh, we can start uh, doing the ink line uh, drawing of the model so here I just uh, you know put those uh, ink line to those uh, vertical and horizontal line that make up the main component of this subject here I'm just uh, drawing up those uh, horizontal lines the gangplank the piers and those uh, supporting uh, structure or those supposed that support the the pier and the gangplank so just to uh, make you aware that uh, you know as we draw line uh, we must always remember that uh, line should always tell a story uh, line should be consistent uh, with our uh, drawings it doesn't need that our lines should be straight Kirby or anything like uh, you know zigzag or whatever uh, the thing here is that uh, our line uh, should be consistent uh, the way we drew it uh, with regards to the pressure to the paper because uh, those things uh, actually affect the how our lines look like in the drawing so here I just uh, relaxingly uh, put pressure on to the pen so that uh, it doesn't exert much uh, pressure to the paper and uh, also uh, one thing to remember is that uh, when we are sketching a sketch is a sketch and uh, what it means that uh, our uh, sketch or our drawing uh, is our own interpretation of the subject. I will fast forward the video so that you can uh, see the final outcome of the ink line drawing of the sketch. I have to apply uh, water over the surface of the drawing paper. The purpose is this is for our uh, sketch or for the paper not to absorb much of the watercolor so that in a way we can have a better control of the watercolor.
The part of the drawing that I will color first is the sky background. For the sky background, I use light blue with a tint of uh, black and then applying it using the flat brush. After spreading those uh, sky uh, blue, I then uh, use the round brush uh, using the same uh, color but uh, adding a little uh, bit of uh, with black uh, tint so I apply those using that uh, brush. For the water part of the sketch using the same small round brush I use uh, the same uh, blue that I use in the sky but this time I added a tint of turquoise uh, blue plus you know tint of uh, light uh, blue green in the case of foreground I'll be using yellow green as a base color for these grasses these grasses are actually those wild grasses that normally grow on such uh, marshland or wetland because of the wetness of the paper, the paper is buckling or warping, so I have to put a metal clip at the edge of the sketch pad. Here, I'm uh, drawing those uh, distant objects in the background, such as uh, foliages, shrubs, those distant trees. Here, as I draw those uh, trees in the background, uh, for a compositional uh, reason and to make uh, you know good judgment on how you place your object, you can uh, tweak or uh, change the shape of those trees. For the body of water, I added a dark tone of blue so that it will create a sense of value, texture, and depth to the water. It will also make the main uh, subject to stand out against this mid-ground. Where necessary, I added extra tone of colors to the principal uh, subject 
and other immediate uh, objects so that its value and its weight would stand out. I'm now adding texture to the grass to simulate uh, those kind of uh, grass that uh, usually grows on the river banks. And uh, as far as I know, those kind of grass that is uh, reed grass, they call it reed grass, and they normally grows on the marshland or uh, wetlands. So this is the way I will be using it by using the pointed uh, tip of the brush. It will also help us to simulate those kind of grass by using a very fine uh, brush with a pointed uh, tip and uh, using a very dark blue green. Here I'm adding uh, some tweaks in terms of color adjustments, extra layer of colors, you know, those things that uh, need color uh, extra weight, uh, extra values, textures, so those things that uh, needs to heighten up in terms of uh, texture, color, values, etc. So guys, I think uh, we're pretty much done with it. We don't want to overdo the sketching uh, process. So I guess um, the sketching session is good. And uh, we've covered up some uh, basic uh, drawing and sketching uh, process all along the way.
So guys, uh, thank you very much for watching uh, this video. So that is all for now. And I thank you for uh, watching uh, and supporting me in this uh, video. So for those of you who like uh, this video, please uh, subscribe and also hit like and uh, share. And also at the same time, I'm inviting you to please uh, share and uh, give your uh, comments in the comment box below so that I uh, will know if you have a suggestion or a recommendation of which uh, subject you want me to, to demonstrate, draw, or uh, show you in the upcoming uh, session. So for now, thank you so much uh, guys and uh, I hope to see you once again in my next video.